Uh, somebody asked a question in my last video about um, how tight this wheel was in here. Um, and I kind of described what I was going to do and they asked, why don't I just take some washers off? Um, and that's a good question when you don't really see how it goes together, which I didn't really show. So now that I'm starting to work on getting this to move a little freer, I um, thought I'd make a quick video here just to show that you've got these two mounts, these two gray pieces, which are part of the VEX Robotics Wheels modification. They differ from the standard ones that you would print if you used make your own Omni wheels. So these are part of the modification as are these. Um, printed in PETG, these are spacers. Here's the VEX Robotics wheel, three and a half inch wheel that you, you get from VEX Robotics. This is one VEX Robotics wheel, it's all one assembly. Then you have the Thunder Hex, which is the axle that is listed as unavailable from the VEX Robotics website. Um, VEX Robotics wheels have this hex pattern in the middle of them so that's why it uses this for an axle why does it have a hole in it okay the reason it has a hole in it that's for that's for this so it's a little confusing when you see all this. You're like, wait a minute, what's what's the what's the axle? What's the point of this this thing? If this is the axle that everything rotates on, what what is this in relation to this and these spacers? And how would you make this looser or tighter? So hopefully this will makes sense um, with one hand again this is going to be kind of hard to for me to physically do but this hexagonal spacer which there's two of they go on the top and the bottom of this wheel this thunder hex hexagonal stock that's your axle. Okay. So now you've got, I guess what you would call the wheel and axle assembly here. That goes in to these bushings. If you look at the bushings, they are also hexagonal. So this, well, it's not going to slide in there with the axle. You pop the axle off, and then you slide the spacer's wheel spacer in here, and then you thread the axle through the bearing, the spacer, the wheels, the other spacer, and this bearing. And then you get, if I can reach over here and... Pull the other one. Okay. So there you can see the flanged bearing in there, that piece of metal, that's part of the flanged bearing. Then there's the spacer, then there's the wheel, then there's another spacer, then the flanged bearing. And what you're seeing here that's confusing is This setup, this basically goes through everything, and its purpose is pretty much not to tighten anything, 
its purpose is to keep that hex stock from moving up and down. So the hex stock doesn't come out. Everything goes through, the hex stock goes through this bearing with the hexagonal shape in it, through that bearing. So that's what's spinning. This is spinning on these bearings. This, all that does, oh, and this, this axle is a little bit longer than all of the pieces stuffed in there. And all this does, with another couple washers in and out on the other side, is keep this from going side to side and the axle coming out. It just holds the axle together. It's not pinching anything but the axle. It's not applying pressure to these bearings. So that's, hopefully that kind of explains it and makes sense. I don't really have a good way to... Alright, sorry about that. Couldn't put this together with one hand. So here, hopefully this finishes the illustration of what I'm talking about. This is the hex stock with the hole in it that's going through the bearing, through a plastic spacer, through the wheel, through another plastic spacer, through another bearing. And if you can see from the, the way the light's hitting it there, that hex stock sticks out further than the bearing on that side and a little bit further than the bearing on that side. Now when you drop that through, right, and then you bolt it to the other side, the only thing that those washers are compressing is this thunder stock, the hexagonal stock. So all it is is to keep the assembly together so it doesn't come out of one or the other side of this assembly. It's not actually pinching this, the plastic pieces together or the wheels and the washers together. It's simply keeping the thunder hex so it can't go work its way out either direction. So that's why um, removing washers from the outside isn't going to affect how smoothly the wheel spins. Because what affects the wheel spinning is the distance between the flanged bearings on either side of these 3D printed pieces and those 3D printed spacers and the VEX wheels. So I just took this one off um, and I sanded those spacers a little bit and it spins freer than it did before. Um, that might be as free as that's going to spin. If you're wondering why you don't spin it and it just spins and spins and spins like a fidget spinner or something, that has more to do with the bearings that are in use here. These, these bearings These are like pretty heavy duty, sealed, greased bearings, right? They have grease in them. They can hold a fair amount of weight. And that's just the way that type of bearing is made is, is not to spin crazy fast. It's to be able to spin and support weight and last for a long time. So that's why that doesn't spin that fast. Whereas this one, if I spin, if I spin the tire, 
bearings in this tire I'm using, this wheel, um, are probably not the best. I didn't order any bearings because I, hey, four years ago when I got my printer, like a lot of people, I was making fidget spinners and I have quite a few of the 608 skateboard fidget spinner type bearings. So I didn't order any sealed greased bearings. I just had some leftover greased but not metal shield sealed, just plastic retainer sealed um, skateboard bearings. So I went ahead and used these. So that's partially why that spins so free as opposed to this one doesn't. These are larger bearings, greased bearings, and they're not meant to spin as free as this. So I'm quite happy with the way this is spinning actually. I mean it doesn't seem like it's spinning all that free, but it is better than before I mess with those spacers. I might reprint the spacers. Um, I need to load them into my slicer and see how thick they are in the slicer and then maybe just reduce the Z height and reprint them. All right, reprinted these. Uh, these, the original files, they are 5.51 millimeters thick. I don't know why, that's kind of a, <laughs> an odd size, 5.51. You really have to go to the hundredth to get that uh, right. But of course, everybody's printer might be a little bit different. Um, and I had warping issues as well. So uh, these 5.51, I had sanded some down, but it really, it really wasn't that much. So I decided to go ahead and reprint some. And I decided just to make them 5 millimeter. Um, printed them in just some of my leftover white PETG and printing them at five millimeter instead of 5.51 this is what I get I am extremely happy with that there's no play left to right um, I was really thinking or up to down in this case um, I was really thinking that I might have made them too small and there would be a gap in there but there's not and they spin they spin great. They spin better than I thought that they would spin with these greased bearings like I was talking about earlier in this video here. Which is, I'm sorry, it's a three videos all cut together and put into one. But, um, yeah, so basically you want your Thunder Hex stock to be slightly wider than your wheels, spacers, and flanged bearings and then you can adjust by sanding or reprinting the spacers in different sizes to get a snug fit in there of your wheel everything has that hex stock going through it that's your axle the washers and the nut and the threaded rod that goes through the hex stock is just to keep the assembly from moving left right um, oh. and mine does move a little bit left right I don't think it was doing that before uh, let me get this one I'm printing two more of those bearings now yeah. Okay, this one does too. This one, it's well, it's hard to show it, but this this does go up and down a little, and that's because you print the hex stock longer than your internal assembly there. 
so it does have a little bit of play, but that's fine because it's only going to go as far as those washers. The washers will stop it from going any further than that. And as long as that side bolt doesn't stick out of the foot shell, which admittedly I haven't done anything with the foot shells, I haven't put the foot shells on, then you're fine. Um, so yeah, consider this drive unit done. That's, that's perfect. I'm really happy with that. So, like I said, I'm printing uh, replacement thinner spacers for the other one. And then I still, I never got 18 millimeter bolts here. So I'm going to have to cut a few millimeters off some bolts because these bolts stick out into this cavity. And other than that, and the motors, pretty much done with these. Um, I still haven't decided. I have a little bit of PETG. What I wouldn't mind doing is printing this gear wheel here. This gear screws into this wheel. So this is the tire, the wheel, the wheel gear. And this is the wheel gear that in my other video I showed you has a 608 bearing in it that moves up and down because it's not a snug fit into this gear. So I was thinking about reprinting this gear with my current PEDG settings, which are different than the settings I used when I printed the majority of this, and see if that bearing fits in there tighter. Um, but I haven't done that yet because it's, it's a pretty big gear and I think the wiser thing would be to print the middle gear in there. I think it uses less filament. I'm pretty sure I have enough to print the middle gear. I'm not sure that I have enough to print this one. This one uses a skateboard bearing and this one uses a smaller sized bearing but it also just drops right into the um, gear. It doesn't, it, you don't have to push it in. It doesn't, it's not friction held in. It's just, it's like this printed a little bit. My gears printed a little bit bigger than they should have. So anyway, uh, main point of this video is showing how this works and to adjust the spacers by sanding, which I tried and it was taking forever to only get minuscule amounts off because I think I'm using 220, um, 150 grit sandpaper. So I just reprinted some, and yeah, that, that's beautiful, I really like that, that's perfect.